All right, welcome to the May, May 1st idea share um, from Key Ministry. Um, my name is Beth Golick and my colleague, Catherine Boyle, our Director of Mental Health Ministry is here. And it's great to see people that we just saw this weekend at Disability in the Church 2023. Um, the rest of you, we missed you and we wanna see you next time. Um, so this is just a conversation. This is just a check-in, encouragement, questions, whatever. So who would like to begin? Barb, thank okay, you. Okay, I'll get us started. I just want to say I was one of the people that went to the Disability in the Church conference yesterday that was hosted by Key Ministry. And my biggest takeaway from it was how incredible is it for the amount of encouragement and collaboration across all the different ministries? I just left feeling so hope-filled, not just for our field and for our mission, but for humanity. So that um, it was just incredible. So I okay, I'm to... still a little tired, so I'm, I'll probably get weepy if we hear too much of that. <laughs> no, it was, thank you. I just really, the level of collaboration and encouragement was off the charts. Mm, it was, it really was. Yeah, yeah. Thank you I for was, sharing that. I was in, real quick, I was in one session where at the end of the session, the whole class got up and laid hands on the speaker and prayed for him. Like That's that was amazing. probably my favorite part of the whole conference. And I was like, this is why I do ministry right here. Yeah, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing that, Barb. And we're just very grateful that you were part of it. So thank you. Who else would like to say something? Share something, ask something. Yes, Al. I also was at the uh, conference in Cleveland. It was my third time, I think. Um, it was like a really good family reunion. My family doesn't do reunions, but I think if we did one, that would be what that would be like. Very encouraging, seeing a lot of different people from different worlds. And uh, just, it was a great time overall. Great conferences too. The pre-conference on mental health that Catherine and Dr. Steve led, that was really good as well. So thanks for that. Thank you for making the trip. I know it's a big commitment to, you know, to fly across country or drive across country. Um, so thank you. And I'm glad um, it kind of wouldn't be the same without you there, Al. So I'm glad you were there. What else is going on? Someone's got to share. This is going to be a super short <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Al. Um, yeah, I'm um, planning on doing a three-week disability ministry scouting trip, vision trip to France, leaving in um, I, yeah, about under three weeks, um, going back home in some ways where I was 20 years really excited and uh, we'll see what God opens up. But I think so many resources in the US that could be helpful for the French church <clears throat> to multiply ministries. It's not even multiplying, it's adding right now. I think, I don't know too many <laughs> in France <clears throat> churches doing disability inclusion, but I hope to see that happen in the next few years in France. That's so cool. So I don't know if you'll be back in time for our June idea share now. And we won't do July because that would be the 4th of July, Monday. Um, so August, we'll start with you, Al, and you can give us the report on um, that experience and you know how we can help equip the French church maybe. You know, there's a lot of resources here. Um, cool. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question, Al? Like who, what ministries are there? Like is Johnny and Friends there? I don't believe Johnny and Friends is there. There's a group called Fami Jatem. It's family I love you is what that means. They're trying some stuff with autism. There's a conference I'm going to. It's more like a family retreat, I think. I'm not quite sure exactly, but, and there's, 
a camp <clears throat> near Lyon in the Alps that's thinking of doing something. There's also <clears throat> a camp on the Atlantic coast in uh, La Vendée that's run by a British organization that's doing something. But <clears throat> um, I'm not sure what else is going on. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, connecting with my old friends <clears throat> from 20 years in France, and hopefully that'll help. I'm actually staying in my old building with a family. They're both doctors of philosophy, and um, he has Alzheimer's now. So I hope to see what they do with him just personally. Um, that's on the older side, but maybe that's something that's needed. Uh, maybe that side of disability ministry more on the older uh, as well as with, with children and, and teens and young adults and others too. Very cool. Um, Linda, you have your hand raised. Yeah, you said this was in France? Yes. I know a church in France that is, uh, was a church plant of McLean Bible. Mm. And, um, I know that we are, we are, con we're, and I know a couple other pastors that SALT's working with, I think, in France. So I could uh, talk to them. Um, I know, I'm trying to think, of, I don't know the area of France because I just, you know, I've been in Germany and Warsaw. So, but um, maybe I can send them my email and we can connect them because always having a local church help out because that's what i'm trying to do with this german church near the where the kids are is a good thing and this is a church that's uh very outreach very in the basis of what how mclean is with you know we have a huge access ministry two of our access ministry people were actually at the conference this year for the first time yeah. so i was like wow so they've been one this come every year but it didn't happen, but let me um, get Al's information. He can send it to me in chat and maybe we can connect this because our SALT's primary goal is to have churches that welcome all and they feel like they belong. And that's a very important cultural thing that we're instilling in any church that we partnership with. So. Um, so. Yes, so Linda's, the ministry that Linda's with SALT, and Al, you might be familiar with that. Um, so yeah, definitely you two connect, and if you need help connecting, I can help okay, you. Okay, you can do that offline if you want, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, that was pretty fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I was late. I was actually in a SALT meeting, and I'm like, I have to go. <laughs> um, that's, that's awesome. All right. All right. I saw somebody else had their hand raised, but Mercedes has. It. Okay, so uh, okay, we'll come back to what's because I'm excited for that too. And so Mercedes, we'll hear more about what she's has in the chat in a second. So I saw Barb and Bronwyn. I'm fine going third. You could do Barb in the chat and then me. That's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just had a question on the international. Um, this week, I received a message from a ministry in India asking if we could come and help train them, which wonderful works, we are not equipped to do that. But I told him I would start looking uh, through this network and see if anyone knows of organizations that work in India um, on disability ministry training. Pam Please. has her hand raised on that. I'm guessing it's on that. <laughs> Where? Pam. Pam, uh, yes. yes. We, okay. have, we have Young Life um, working with special needs in India. Oh, sweet. So. Um, I can put my contact information in the chat and then I can get you to whoever. That would be great. He's supposed to send me a more detailed email uh, this week on what specifically he's looking for. But yes, I would love to get your uh, get connected with you. Thank you. Yeah. India is a very big country, but John, it is, is also very big. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's another so one of those, been, you know, I don't know really where or when. Yeah, um, and a lot of languages too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anything else on the international front before we move to, um, okay, and also in the chat, um, Bronwyn is suggesting, Barb, that you contact Ryan Wolf at ryan at abilityministry.com because he's done some international ministry consultants and may have some ideas. Great. Um, 
Okay. Yes, Mercedes, please fill us in about Make Them Smile because that's the big event coming up this weekend. I, I, can anybody hear her? Yeah. No. It says you're not muted, but we can't hear you. Yeah, now you're muted. Now you're definitely muted. I, it must be your microphone. Try clicking on the microphone icon in the bottom left and. Not yet. Okay, go to your audio, audio settings. Um, while she's working on that, I'm just going to read from the chat. So Ryan shared that Johnny and Friends has staff in country in India. Um, so if you two want to connect and narrow down where in India, um, he'll connect you. Um, okay, Mercedes, while you're working on that, I'm going to go to Bronwyn. We'll come back to you. If it's still not working, I'll read from the chat. Okay, how's that? <laughs> okay, Bronwyn. <laughs> Uh, moving my computer on the staff microwave here. Um, <laughs> so I was not in Cleveland or France or India, but I was in Southern California this last weekend um, at a denominational uh, conference. And what was really cool is we had um, like a jazz ensemble from Los Angeles perform and all of the uh, participants um, had disabilities and they performed for like the whole big denominational conference deal. Um, and afterward, uh, I kind of talked a little bit about inclusion and why it's important and all that good stuff um but it was really awesome like people were really um impacted by it and we, you know we didn't, we didn't tell people ahead of time uh what it was or who they were we just said hey we have a special guest uh ensemble coming uh for us um uh the uh evangelical covenant denominations um and so yeah it really sparked some good discussions um there's a pastor in southern california who i've been working with who asked um if maybe we could work together on getting like a disability family camp going. Um, he works in uh, central, like South Central Los Angeles, um, like Watts, Compton kind of area. And there's a lot of families um, down there that would like to connect and have some resources. Um, I'm in Northern California, so it's a little bit, it's like about a six hour drive, um, not impossible, um, but um, kind of seeing where, where that might go. So uh, I think it'd be fun. That's fantastic. And yes, we missed you, but you were doing important work. So, I mean, it was a sunny Southern California. We did go to the beach for part of the time. So, uh, you guys have Lake Erie, though, which was nice. So. Yeah, but we didn't have much sun. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. All right. Mercedes, how are we doing? So, I connected with my phone. I hope you guys can hear me. Yes. All right. <laughs> go for it. Um. So, I was just saying, yeah, so we're preparing, uh, this is my first event. Um, and like I was trying to say there, if I was to turn around my camera, my office is a mess, like just putting bags together and the event, you know, things that we're gonna be doing. Um, super nervous, cause I, I'm pretty sure other tables are gonna be super, you know, more prepared, but I mean, it's still exciting to meet all of our VIPs and kind of have um, a chance to, you know, get, information from families and and to see how we can um, help the community nearby here so so not everybody's familiar probably with make them smile can you tell us a little bit about where and what and about how many people are going to be there and all that oh yeah so it's from uh nathaniel's hope um and it's celebrating every it's celebrated every year usually it's in um i want to say in june but because of the uh, hurricanes it got set back um just to have better better weather um it's about a quarter of a million people i hear uh, like thousands thousands of people like i was preparing for about 500 gifts and they were like no my dear put a one in front <laughs> and and i was like okay so um it's 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 gonna be a great i'm super excited like i said i don't know what's to be expected but um i can't wait to meet great people, great other resources that we, you know, for us to collaborate. So I will, any, I will have, have any of you attended Make Them Smile in Orlando before? So yes, Al's been, um, 
So it's it's outside and it's around this beautiful lake. Yeah. And um, I'll, do you want to say anything about the event? Yeah, it's, it's about a mile in circumference, the lake. So it's nice because they spread out booths all around. So it's great for families um, because you do a, a lap basically around and there's all sorts of fun stuff from animals to different things you can do, all sorts of informational things as well. I represented Special Fathers Network there last year. Um, so yeah, for information, there's a lot and it is good they're moving it up a month because it is very hot in June. So May should be a lot more bearable for people. It starts really early in the morning, like seven or something and finishes early too because it's so darn hot in Florida. But yeah, the families love it. And some people take their vacation there. They go to Orlando for that event and then do other stuff as well. So it's it's a great event. It's about the 20th one, I think this year, 21st or something. Yeah. They've been doing it for a while. Yeah, and I think Marie Cook told me it's the fourth largest event in Orlando, like annual event in Orlando. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so that's on Saturday. Um, yeah, well, good luck, and I hope the weather's awesome. I know. I think it was was it last year that it rained. I it did. It was actually nice because it rained, but it stopped. So that made it cool. So it was the most comfortable one of the three I've been to because of the rain and people stayed longer because it was cooler longer in the morning. Yeah. So Pam asked in the chat if families come from other places or it just is it just Orlando based families. So I mean, definitely it's for families in Orlando. But as Al mentioned, people do come and, you know, make a vacation out of it. Um, and there are a couple other make them smile events around the U.S. Um, and I in think- Ohio and California, they mm -hmm. had one in Wisconsin. I don't think they're doing that anymore. Yeah. But yeah. And so this is definitely something um, that Nathaniel's Hope would like to see grow, um, you know, to take that model and um, spread it out geographically, so. We hope to do it in New Jersey. That's one reason I've gone several times to get ideas how they do it. So hopefully, We'll do it in the Northeast sometime. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we'll need to report on that next month. All right, who has, else has something to share or needs encouragement, has a question? Everybody's just worn out. <laughs> I'll just jump in and say hi. Hi. <laughs> it was great to have you here this weekend. It was great to be there. I'm impressed you're uh, you're hosting this thing after uh, being worn out with that big with the conference. It was my first time being there. I had a great time. I was so so grateful. Uh, I have to jump off in a couple of minutes. I just came from a class and go into a meeting, but I at least wanted to just jump in and uh, stay connected. So it's good to see. You. Yeah. Faces from the conference and uh, look forward to uh, uh, staying connected with the good work you guys are doing and help uh, accelerate disability ministry. Yes, thank you. And we as well want to stay connected. So um, Dr. Boehm did a presentation with Dr. Eric Carter, a workshop. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you for being being part of disability in the church. Anybody else have anything to share? I'm gonna keep it short this this month. Yeah, I just want to, um, if God, if people can pray for our upcoming trip to Germany with our first access. A little background is uh, our medical director, Zoriana, has been hired by the German government to help 81 Ukrainian disabled orphans who were actually brought into the country in cages with their hands tied behind their back. And um, it was just heart-wrenching. She cried for two days. She runs our Wings of Faith ministry in Rivna, Ukraine, which is a preschool for autistic children. And I will say when I saw them in July, it was like a concentration camp looking at survivors. Now I was there in March and um, it's wonderful. She has 40 caretaker Ukrainian people 
who are loving on these kids. They're having physical touch. They're smiling. I photographed each kid, except for one did not want to be photographed. They put me to work at this place. <laughs> um, I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of this facility. It's a wonderful facility. 2,500 disabled people get services here. And we're having an access camp. And they are opening everything. And we're actually going to have a concert with my director's brother is a musician. And we're going to have a concert with a jazz band. And disabled people participating in that even. So uh, pray for this, that we can get more participants. Um, the unique part of this trip is the camp is half a day. So the other part of the day is free time. So people can do whatever they want. Go to the pool, go see something. So it's a great opportunity to do service and also do a little sightseeing. But uh, just pray for it. It's going to be awesome. And uh, it's just been a lot of setbacks, yeah. <laughs> you know, budget participation it's just like oh my gosh but uh I, I i'm just feeling good about this that god will really be proclaimed and maybe change some of the hearts actually at this facility even it's run by a monastery um it's just a wonderful place to be but um very excited about it that's that's amazing that's huge and amazing um what are the dates so the key ministry team can Put it on it our is uh, July 1st to the 11th. Okay. Um, my sister's considering coming with her, my niece who's graduating, so pray for that. But she goes back and forth. But uh, we do have Carrie, our part of SALT, who works in the public school system. She couldn't come to the conference this year. She wanted to. But uh, pray that more people might want to come. And we have three Ukrainians coming. Pray that they will be able to come. So it's, I think it'll be beautiful. And then we're going to have this concert. So, and that's going to be fun. So Linda, how can people um, get your, cause I love your newsletter, like your email that you send. Um, how can people sign up for that? And then also, and then there's something in the chat I'm going to read out loud, but. Yeah, um, they can either, I can put, go to my website or, you know, send me an email and I can put them on my, I send out email twice a week. I mean, twice a month, sorry. And it's basically my blogs and information to uh, mm -hmm. to what I'm doing. Um, I, 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 I do have people that support me monthly and people that just support a trip, but I'm a full-time missionary, a part-time photographer and a part-time project manager. <laughs> For architecture, for my, my that adds up. That adds up to more than a hundred percent. my director, he's my ministry director, who was at the uh, he was at the conference, gave a quick talk uh, Saturday. Um, he's also my boss, so he's an architect. So he's my friend, my boss, and my ministry director. Sometimes it can be rather complex. Yes. But, um, yeah, my blog, I it is on my website, but I do email it because some people like the email. Some people like to check it out on the blog, but I do only twice a month. And this year I'm blogging. The second blog of the month is about challenging verses. Like I just did one on memorization because my visual mind is very hard to, uh, you know, memorize verses. <laughs> So, but my book, my director just saw the Temple Grandin movie and he's like, do you know who, yeah, <laughs> what have you been? <laughs> what does this remind awesome. me of? <laughs> yeah, that's an awesome movie. But I just put my um, website link, they can go there and either send me an email uh, or there's a way to sign up for the, to, to the uh, blog. Okay, so. so we'll we'll add that. So it's abnormalmissionary.org and we will add that to the, you know, the, links when we post the video so yeah so all right so in the chat um andrea is asking saying linda we are considering further missions in germany that would include individuals with disabilities going do you have your contact or someone's that i could be in contact with so yes yeah, so so she now you have her contact you. yeah i mean she can get it through you i go to europe four times a year um my fundraising primarily supports my mission work not my living my part-time jobs prevent allows me to live nicely and my bosses I've actually two bosses are very um gracious and let me go and um I'm usually there two to three weeks in Germany Poland sometimes 
depending. I used to get a Ukraine a lot, but not now. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to contact me, if you're interested in the trip, I can send you the application stuff. Um, everything's done through this website for fundraising. It keeps track of everything. And then it sends people their tax stuff later. So um, it is, uh, I think it's going to be an exciting trip. It just seems like there's a lot of satanic attacks on them. <laughs> well, which means it's probably a really, yeah. like God's doing big things. And um, I can give people offline the information about this facility. They just have this really long word because it's German. <laughs> I can pronounce it, but people are going to be like, what? What but, is yeah. that? <laughs> they just call it DRW. So. Okay. But it is a phenomenal facility that's been there since the 1800s. So, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So. All right. Any other Yes, Al. Sorry, yeah, I'm talking a lot today. Um, Bronwyn, I know she's part of the Evangelical Covenant. I'm part of the Evangelical Free Church. And um, we have a group that's started in the last couple of years. Um, it's an affinity group for disability leaders. Um, Jolene Philo kind of helps run that group. And Jim Roden, who was one of the four pastors, he's he spoke uh, last or two weeks ago on that. But it, I would encourage you if you're in a denomination to try to work that as much as you can. It can be slow going, but um, the um, disability and special needs is part of the all people movement within the evangelical free church, which normally has been thought of as more ethnic and things like that, but they've come around to see disability as part of that. And um, I was at actually in an event on a, it was a, Kind of a silent retreat that wasn't disability but i went to it and um, one of the assistant superintendents is a former philadelphia eagle football player and he has on his staff now someone with autism who also came who runs their multimedia ministry things like that and at the end of the conference um cedric brown said to me he'd like to see his church as well as our district in the east coast which includes a good part of the u.s population in it get better with disability. And so, you know, Jolene and I and others within the Evangelical Free Church are trying to help move the ball forward. But whatever group you're in, if it's good and a good investment probably to try to get to some of those denominational meetings and um, be part of bringing good change to whatever association you're in. Great, thank you for sharing that. Barb. On that same subject, um, I would like to ask for prayer. So I'm part of the Church of the Nazarene and June 9th, um, my Wonderful Works co-leader, Leah Wicker and I are gonna be speaking at our Church of the Nazarene General Assembly, which is um, you know their big national conference they have every year. So if you could be praying for that, um, we are starting to do some partnership with our denomination. Well. And I uh, just pray that it is well received and we start seeing some like tangible action steps at the local church level, because I will say so far at the top denominational leaders level, they have been phenomenal. I cannot say enough nice things about it, but um, just be praying for that. And also we are waiting to hear on a major fundraising um, decision coming in the summer that could be one way or another, it'll be a game changer for us. Just pray for God's will to be done and um, just for his hand over that. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Barb. Yeah, you, she shared this with me at the conference and yes, and the key ministry team will add, definitely add that to, I can see Catherine jotting it down right now. Um, Linda. I forgot to tell people, I don't know if they're, they are aware of that FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, is now hosting usually one day events called All Ability Camp. Mm -hmm. I went to it last year, that was first year. It's actually international. The Ukraine team did one in Warsaw. It is the most awesome thing to be a part of. Um, I, I do a lot with the Central Maryland and um, just to be an eye out if you want to participate in something in the summer, it's a one day commitment and it's absolutely incredible these kids have a real they, they're usually in the football stadium they got a lot of high schoolers being helpers 
it was just amazing. And it's like half the day they're outside and then it's not a full day, but afterwards they have like a meal and stuff. But I would greatly encourage check out to see if your local FCA has this. I was just when the director of Maryland told me, I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> So, I did the, I volunteered at the one in Cleveland this past year and it was really fun. Really yeah, because fun. one of the FCA lacrosse is based in Maryland and one of the coaches had a Down syndrome child and um, it was really difficult for him. And that kid is actually the team kid for yeah. Albert Hall's lacrosse program. Hmm. And I, he's grown up now. I told my friend, he is so kid. He was part of the FCA lacrosse had a two day, like Friday evening to Saturday kind of thing inside a gym. And he was like the main kid. I'm like, this is so awesome. And I'm just, I don't know if you know who uh, DJ Bergrant says he's a football player for the Ravens. I got uh, LES and he's very crippled, but he comes to their, their, their main fundraising event every year. And I'm so inspired by his testimony and what he's doing with kids. And I'm like, this is awesome now. And I'm like, we need to encourage FCA to do things all year round. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe take some kids bowling, do some stuff with the blind, blind you know, athletes. I, I just would love, you know, just to encourage people to be a part of this. It's just beautiful. And I'm someone who was bullied by athletes. I would have never thought I would be serving with FCA and they're some of my biggest supporters. And, yeah, it's God has ways. Yeah, so. only God, right? Yes, only God. But I just, I, I just would really encourage people. It's a one day thing, but you know, encourage them to do this all through the year. Yeah, it's Christmas yeah. time, have a respite time. Kids come, have fun. Parents can go shopping. So, I want Linda to move to Cleveland. <laughs> like she's got a lot of ideas, and she's very encouraging. I was just like when I, I was riding around because I work for an architect, and I was in architecture school, and I designed my sister's house. I'm like, man, some of these houses on the lake, they're kind of cool, but man, <laughs> you know, I I do love that area that there's some very historical looking houses that have been kept up. I love that. So I wish I could. I I my family's here, and it would be hard. Yeah. You know, so, but I do, it's not that far, really. It's five hours or so drive. Yeah. And I drove through a lot of rain yesterday. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I wish we had had better weather for the conference, but that's okay. Well, yeah, my, I can well, last year was beautiful weather, but this year, half my drive was in really bad rain. So I stopped in Frederick and had dinner with my mom and sister. Very nice. I'm hungry and I'm tired. I, yes, I would like to come and visit more, so. All right, anybody else? No, okay. So um, events coming up. So um, I'll post it hopefully later today, but um, our third Wednesday Disability Ministry Video Roundtable, we're gonna talk about baptism. So would love for you, um, Bronwyn, I don't know if you're still on, but yeah, if you guys especially, like, I don't know if, if Ryan's going to be up for it, but if you guys can, we'd love to hear about, like, I know you have a booklet and all that. Um, yeah, so that's the third Wednesday. Yeah, I'll connect uh, with Ryan and Jason. And okay, cool. We'll, we'll either all be here or one of us will be here. So okay. we'll see. Yeah. Okay. And this actually, um, it started... The reason we're doing this is, um, so as many of you know, I work at a church, um, I'm the director of disability engagement, and I'm part of the discipleship team. And they were talking about baptism. And I was like, hey, what about my peeps? And um, so they might actually be joining us on this um, roundtable to learn more. So, um, so that's that. Catherine, not to put you on the spot, but I always do. Um, could you please tell us a little bit about the Fresh Hope um, Partnership Initiative yes. Yes. collaboration thingy? Yes. So um, if you're at the conference, you already heard this. So just bear with um, me for a second as I talk about this. So uh, Fresh Hope for Mental Health has been a great ministry friend to Key Ministry. And um, in the past year, Steve, you know, Dr. Steve and Brad Hayes, the founder and, and head of Fresh Hope, have had some conversations around the mental health needs 
of families that live with disabilities um, because it, that is a consistent need in families that live with disabilities of any kind. And so over the past six months or so, we've been working on a project with the Fresh Hope team to develop some curriculum specific to the needs of families with disabilities. So we announced this at DATC this weekend. And what we are seeking right now, and the reason that I'm sharing this with you is that um, we would like to launch a couple of different um, beta groups this summer, probably starting around the 1st of July timeframe. Um, the way that Fresh Hope's materials are organized is that um, for all of their different uh, support groups that um, you know meet the needs of different pop population groups, um, they're all based around specific tenets that are universally true for that population. And so we have developed those tenets for uh, caregiving families. We are currently working on you know the um, actual you know uh, fully written out curriculum. The tenets are the most challenging part to come up with. But anyway, we'll be we'll be fleshing out the curriculum over the next couple of months. And so we're seeking uh, probably uh, four co-facilitators for two different groups, and then up to like say 10 to 12 people for each group. Um, you know, we, we definitely want this to be a, a typical small group kind of experience. And then from the experience of those groups, we will refine the material um, in anticipation of producing the material probably, you know, available for, um, for Fresh Hope to distribute around the first of next year. So if you're interested in learning more about this, please just shoot me an email, Catherine with a C at keyministry.org. Um, happily, I had about half a dozen people that came up to me at the conference and said that they were interested in, in either being in the group or potentially co-facilitating. If you're interested in potentially co-facilitating, we will have some, um, some meetings, some guidance for the co-facilitators in advance of launching the group. So, you know, nobody's going to be doing this you know, completely on their own. So anyway, um, more information on that to come, but please reach out to me if this is something that you're interested in helping with. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, if that is all, any last minute, anything? All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, it was great to, to see you all again. And um, yeah, we will do this in June. Again, we'll take July off, but hopefully a lot of you can join us um, on the third Wednesday of this month for the Disability Ministry Video Roundtable. And um, we'll, we'll chat soon. So thanks everybody. Have a great week.